I'm Jan Eliasson. I used to be Foreign Minister of Sweden and a special envoy for dealing with the conflict in Darfur. And now I am chair of the Water Aid Sweden, which is just established. And it's supposed to both bring about resources to uh, getting safe water to about, about millions to millions of people, but also advocacy and information about the very serious water issue in today's world. And you've been working a lot with conflicts in the past. Um, can you see any, any connections between water and conflict and cooperation? I think uh, water should be seen uh, as both a factor when it comes to development, fighting poverty in the world, but also in terms of bringing about closer cooperation instead of conflict. And I've seen that personally in Darfur how the water issue uh, makes the difficult, uh, the uh, conflict more difficult to solve. I've also seen, of course, the children dying from diarrhea, dying from uh, dysentery, uh, having their bodies dehydrated, drying out, and uh, how then water is both an issue for the uh, development of a country and also for maintaining peace. When it comes to um, uh, water and conflict, I think we are facing a very important choice, namely when we now have scarce resources and water is growingly a scarce resources resource, will we fight about this resource? Will we uh, poison each other's wells? Will we stop the rivers from giving water to another country which is bordering to your own country? Or will we use water as a factor that brings nations together, where we can find cooperative solutions. If, for instance, the Israelis and Palestinians could find a way of equitably and fairly sharing the resources and having both sides having access to water, that would be, uh, first of all, the right thing to do from a human perspective, not least the Palestinians. But it also be, would be a confidence-building measure that could promote peace. So I think we have a very important choice to make. Shall the lack of resources bring about conflict or bring about cooperation? And I think this meeting, which is so well organized by CV and here at the World Water Week, is a good chance to mobilize both governments and uh, international organizations and civil society and industry and the academic world to find such formulas, such ways to bring about cooperation instead of conflict. So here we have a huge task. We have to work to get safe water to eight to 900 million people in the world. We have to work to get sanitation, which is a sanitized word for toilets, to 2.5 billion people. And if we do that and do it quickly, we can reduce this tremendous rate of mortality for children. 28% of the children dying in the world die from diarrhea due to bad water. It's more than people dying, kids dying from uh, TBC, tuberculosis and malaria and AIDS together. And if we then can really bring about a reduction of these horrible figures, which are a shame to humanity, namely uh, 5,000, 4 to 5,000 children die, dying every day for these reasons, uh, then I think a meeting like this is meaningful. But it is only meaningful if, if people outside feel that yes we can do something and I say nobody can do everything but everybody can do something and on the water issue you, you have plenty of chances to do something not least through water aid Sweden which was just established. And what experiences from the international arena um, do you think you can use in your work at water aid? Well I, I think there is need now to mobilize uh, both resources and uh, mobilize public opinion to bring these issues to the forefront. And uh, I think what, what I can do is possibly use the international network that I have to, for instance, uh, bring more attention to the need for a uh, program of action uh, on water, including both governments, civil society, academia, and uh, the private sector. And I also think we can, uh, we can uh, together, 
uh, find ways of more effectively dealing both with the problems of development and the problems of conflict. I also want to add something which some people consider controversial, but which I think is re we are ready to discuss this. Is water also a human right? Yeah. From a technical point or legal point of view, one might say that human rights are always free, and sometimes water may cost money. But if you look at the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we are stating that all men and women are born equal, born free, and right to equal rights and, and live a life in dignity. We say in Article 3 that there is a right for everyone to life. How does that square with 5,000 children dying every day? And then there is also a paragraph, an article, Article 25, which says that we have a right to a standard of living which makes it possible to maintain a level of health uh, to make survival possible for a family. This, I think, altogether shows that we must both work for the economic and social rights as part of the human rights uh, machinery, but at the same time, of course, never, never reduce the value of civil rights and political rights. It's not a question of either or, it's both that. So water, even if it's a very concrete issue, which is easy to mobilize public opinion around, I hope, uh, it is also related to peace, as I just have seen myself in Darfur. It is related to development, of course, as we have seen from the effects on children, not least, and not least, not least girls, who are usually the ones who collect water, but also on the quality of life, the dignity of man, uh, on human rights. So that's why the water issue is such a great issue to work with. It's the right thing to do, but it's also a mobilizing power in the concept of uh, dealing with water and sanitation. And that's why the World Water Week in Stockholm here is so important, because it brings people together from so many walks of life so that we can indeed meet, exchange experience, but also mobilize and create the basis for a stronger public opinion, actually requiring an improvement of the situation as it is today. Thank you very much.